Hey guys, welcome back. Luca here. For this video, I just want to answer some of the questions that many of you have asked me. First question is, what are your responsibilities when you are on call? And how long does it take? So first thing, different company have different on-call schedules and how it works. Generally speaking, on-call is for this whole week, you, your responsibility is to push and make any new changes public to the consumer, to the end client. So for example, when I'm on call, my job is to look at the graph to see if we have any spikes in any of the QPS, any of the API endpoint that we have created. This is like a signal that we might have some sort of attacks or some sort of errors. And, and we also want to look at our logs, our internal tools to see if there's any spikes in error rates. Are the higher error rate caused by more traffic or are the traffic or are the error caused by something that on the server side, the network issues, all of these are different things that we want to put into. The next thing I need to do is I need to triage, meaning looking through all the ticket that's being submitted to us to see, are there any high priority issues? What are the P zeros, meaning the stuff that we need to fix right now and push it to prod. If there's any of them, I need to either fix them or address it to the team and assign it to someone who can fix it. So we would have a weekly engineering meeting and anything that's not as high priority, we can go over it and triage together and assign it to the necessary people or the POC to attack on these tasks. So generally speaking, when I am on call, it's on a weekly basis, meaning I'm on call for the whole week. And for my team, we don't have, there are different tiers of on call, meaning first tier is like only business hours. Second tier means you, can, you only have 15 minutes or so to respond. And then the top tier is when you have to respond within like five minutes. And some teams are more strict. They give you a pager, meaning if there's like an issue, they can ping you any day. Someone from my sibling team was on call on one of these high priorities. And a lot of times they get paged in the middle of the night, sometimes two, sometimes 3 a.m. because like the products are being used across the globe. Sometimes we have people working in Europe time zones, so they get up really early. So, so the issues start coming in really early in the day. And if you do get paged, you have to resolve it very fast. And a lot of times when this issue happens and you don't know what to do, the first thing that generally speaking is to revert back to a working branch. If you don't know what the quick fix or how fix is, we start a rolling back cycle, meaning we revert back to the prior release that was working. So this is something that at least we are confident is being tested. So in the meantime, we need to figure out what's went wrong. So reverting back to the one that's working, it's almost always the first thing that you should do. So if you don't know anything, just revert back to the previous one and try to bring it out to the team in the morning. And the last part is when we are on call, we are also tasked with pushing the back end, the front end, your system on a weekly basis. And if there's any changes that we need to push into the prod, we call them cherry picks because they're not necessarily the weekly release. There are things that we put on the top, so it's cherry picking. So yeah, generally speaking, my on-call experience hasn't been very stressful because I'm not on the top tier on-call, but I have seen people who work a lot and most people don't prefer to be on-call just because that you, you can get paged at like middle of the night and it's not fun for everyone. Since it's a weekly rotation, it means really depends on how many members are on your team. If you have four members, that means you get on-call every four weeks. If you have six people, then every six weeks. Generally speaking, the more people that are, that's on your team, the less on-call you will have. And the next question I want to talk about is soft skills. A lot of times when you're working in tech, you think, oh, especially at these bigger tech companies, you think all you have to do is to do a good job. That's not necessarily true, especially in today where people are working remote. Soft skills such as connection to your team members, connection to your managers are more important than ever. A lot of times when these promotion happens, especially at these bigger tech companies, you have to ask people for feedback. You have to ask your cross-functional members for feedback. So if a lot of times other people don't know you, then they don't really know what you have been working on. So being very vocal and letting people know what you have been working on is actually very, very important. As well as building a meaningful connection with your team members, your cross-functional partners. I would say working very respectfully and as well as letting people know what you're working on is very important. I would recommend if you are working 
as a software engineer at one of these bigger tech companies, you should try to set on one meeting with your manager at least bi-weekly. This way you can update them what you have been working on and what's you, what issue you might be running into and how you're planning to resolve it, as well as what you want to work on next. And also don't forget to check in with your manager on your progress towards either the next level or the next rating. And when you work at these bigger tech companies, a lot of times, especially client-facing products that requires front-end, you were working with the UX partner where they come up with the mock. And if you are working on these type of projects after finishing it, make sure to tag them, let them know what the end product looks like and try to communicate what might be the gap and let them know as well like what's possible what's not possible because it's very important to communicate these things effectively otherwise they're just going to expect you have not having any issue otherwise when the product is launched then the ux people might come to you and be like hey like i i thought like this is what the end product should look like how come like it looks very different so you really want to update them and then try to showcase screenshot or either real product that they can play around with and address any of the issue and then discuss with them as you slowly work longer and longer on the team or become more and more senior, what's more important than just writing code is actually leadership or providing sense of direction for the team. What's something that you think the team should work on next? What's some of the high priority items that you think the team should work on next? So at one point you are being assigned these tasks and your job is to deliver them and communicate effectively on how you are delivering them. The next phase is to actually set direction for the team and discuss what project and what goal should you address. And this comes with experience. A lot of times, many people ask me like, hey, like, is it wrong if you switch job every year? I say, not really, but a lot of times what can be wrong is, but if you do switch job every year, what you are missing is the follow through from planning phase all the way to planning for the next half. So you actually, miss out on planning potentially for the next half or finishing and addressing what has accomplished. I think if you stay at a team for two years, for example, when you join, maybe the team's goal is already set to stone and you, all, you, all you were doing is to deliver these tasks. You were heads down driving projects after project. And as you build on these projects, you realize like, hey, like these are the gaps, like maybe next half we can do these so by the end of the year, when you're planning for the next half, you can bring up these concerns and then have a very good discussion about where the project should head towards. And now you have planned for the next half. When the next half actually comes, you get to verify if these assumptions are correct. And as you work through it, you might have to update your goals, update your projects and features depending on where the project's actually handing. And then by the end of your second year, you actually get to have a very, very clear development cycle at these big tech companies on how it works from planning to building it to planning it again to revising it and I would say this is something that you don't really get to experience as much of course it depends on the team as well some team has a faster iterating cycle meaning zero to one projects where they don't use yearly as a goal they use the halves or quarterly so it very depends on the team so yeah guys, these are some of the top questions that I hear a lot. So make sure to let me know if you have any other questions and I will try my best to address them. Thank you so much for watching and make sure to like, comment and subscribe.